LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, lift off conditions looking pretty good. ATS is ready for launch. Ignition. Lift off. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Ten, nine, eight. Side booster ignition. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Good afternoon. It's Tuesday, June 29th, and we're here at SpaceX's headquarters in Hawthorne, California. You're looking at a live view of Falcon 9 as it awaits its 2.56 p.m. Eastern Time launch from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. My name is Andy Tran, and I'm a production supervisor here at SpaceX. Welcome to the webcast for SpaceX's Transfer 2 mission. It's our second dedicated small set rideshare program launch and our 20th launch of 2021. SpaceX created this program to provide small satellite operators with more flight opportunities and flexible flight times at a competitive price. There are 85 spacecraft on board in addition to three Starlink satellites. This includes CubeSats, Microsats, and orbital transfer vehicles, sometimes called space tugs, which would deploy their spacecraft after separating from Falcon 9. On screen is Falcon 9 at Space Launch Complex 40. The two-stage rocket stands 70 meters tall, and that is greater than the wingspan of a 747 aircraft. We prep Falcon 9 for launch in our hangar at the base of the pad, and then upon completing final checkouts, Falcon 9 rolls out to the pad and uh, goes vertical. Today's mission is the eighth flight for this particular booster. It debuted about a year ago on the GPS-3 Space Vehicle Number 3 mission, and it also supported the Turksat 5A mission as well as five Starlink missions. You can tell by the re-entry soot on the bottom of the vehicle that this booster has flown before. The bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is the first stage. Its objective is to accelerate the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere to space and then separate from the rest of the rocket. From there, it will make its way back to Earth and target a landing back on land this afternoon on landing zone one, which is the pad that you see on screen right now. And if you are an Eastern Florida resident, you might even be able to see Falcon 9 over the ocean and hear one or more sonic booms as Falcon 9 makes its way back to the landing zone. On top of the first stage is the black carbon fiber interstage. It connects the two stages and houses the pneumatic pushers that allow the first and second stage to separate during flight. Then on top of the interstage is the Falcon 9 second stage, which takes the payload to its eventual destination in orbit. After the first stage separates about two and a half minutes into flight, the second stage will then carry the 88 spacecraft to orbit. In order to get to the intended orbit today, we'll need to light our second stage twice before deploying all of our payloads. And similar to the first transporter mission, we'll be flying a fuel dome payload tray, which is essentially a small platform mounted on the back end of the second stage fuel dome that will release a handful of spacecraft today. This is worth mentioning as we expect this tray to obstruct one of two MVAC views during flight. And at the very top of the rocket, the satellites are safely enclosed inside of the 17-foot diameter payload's fairing. That is what we're seeing on screen right now. This protects the payload from aerothermal loads, heating, and contamination during ascent. Once we reach the vacuum of space, we will jettison the fairing as the second stage continues its journey to orbit. For today's mission, our fairing is making its third flight, and we will be attempting to recover the fairing halves from the water following landing on our our, our chartered recovery vessel, HOS Briarwood. And lastly, the large truss structure next to Falcon 9 is called the Transporter Erector, also known as the TE. Its job is to roll Falcon 9 out to the launch pad, raise it to a vertical launch position, and also route power, fluids, and communication to the rocket and satellite. Uh, at around T minus four and a half minutes, it will begin to retract away from the rocket, providing clearance for Falcon 9 to lift off. The chief engineer held a technical poll at the T-minus one hour mark, and the launch director held a propellant load and launch go-no-go -no -go poll at T-minus 38 minutes. Since the T-minus 35 minute mark, Falcon 9 has been loading propellants, and the vehicle is a bi-propellant vehicle, which means that it uses two types of propellants. 
for fuel, a refined form of kerosene called RP1, and for its oxidizer, super chilled liquid oxygen, also known as LOX. Currently, RP1 is fully loaded on the second stage and nearly fully loaded on the first stage. Liquid oxygen loading is currently underway for um, both of our stages. Helium load began before the webcast went live as well and will continue to top off until about a minute and a half before launch. We use helium to pressurize the tanks as the propellant is pulled out by the uh, engine pumps during ascent. In about 30 seconds, at around the T minus seven minute mark, engine chill will begin. This is where we allow a small amount of super chilled liquid oxygen to flow into the Merlin engine's turbo pumps prior to the full flow of LOX to avoid any thermal shocks to the system. Checkouts of the second stage thrust vector control actuators are also underway. Uh, this is known as the engine wiggle test. Uh, we move the thrust chamber slightly to make sure that the guidance hardware is a go for flight. The first stage engines also perform the same wiggle test just seconds before ignition. At just under seven minutes to lift off, the vehicle is healthy. We are currently working no issues. Range and weather are both green for today. All systems continue to be go for a liftoff at 2.56 p.m. Eastern time. And as I mentioned earlier, this is SpaceX's 20th mission of the year and the 127th mission to date. So far, only one of our missions this year has been launched on a new booster, and for this particular booster, it's going to be flying for the eighth time. Overall, over half the missions we've completed have been flown on flight-proven boosters. Reusability allows SpaceX to refly the most expensive parts of the rocket, which in turn drives down the cost of space Stage access. One fuel load is it, is also, it also allows us to increase our launch cadence and provides more flight opportunities for our customers, like those on board today's mission. Last year, we launched more than any other launch provider in the world. On our first transporter mission earlier this year, we launched a record-breaking 143 spacecraft, which is super cool. And while there are fewer customer spacecraft on board today's mission compared to Transporter 1, we are actually launching more mass to orbit on this mission than the previous one. Several of the customers on board today's Transporter 2 mission have multi-launch agreements with SpaceX. So some of the names that you'll hear a bit later in the webcast might sound familiar to those of you who have tuned in for previous rideshare missions. We're targeting three dedicated rideshare flights to sun-synchronous orbits per year, and we also offer opportunities to ride to orbit on our Starlink missions, which launch every couple of weeks. Small satellites can ride to space on SpaceX's Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, as well as Starship in the not-too-distant future. If you're interested in learning more about the rideshare program or want to reserve your own spot, head on over to our website at spacex.com slash rideshare. We are just under five minutes to liftoff. Falcon 9 is now moving into the final stages of the countdown. Uh, any moment now, the strong back will begin to open up its clamp. Uh, once open, they will retract away from the rocket to its pre-launch position, about two degrees away from Falcon 9. And as Falcon 9 lifts off, hydraulic arms will pull the strong back farther away uh, to make sure that it is clear during liftoff. Strong back retract has started. And so there was the call out for strong back retract. Uh, you can see the clamp arms just under the fairing start to open up. The strong back is part of the transport erector, also called the TE. Again, its job is to roll Falcon 9 out to the launch pad, raise it to a vertical launch position, route power, fluids, and communication to both the rocket and satellite. And you can start to hear some of the hissing and popping, and that is pressure venting from the rocket and the plumbing in the transporter erector. So at this stage, the strong back should be uh, reclined to its pre-launch position, two degrees away from Falcon 9. The vehicle remains in good health. The first and second stages are almost done fueling. Um, gaseous oxygen is also vented from the base of Falcon 9. That is the chilling of the Merlin engine turbo pumps. About a minute before liftoff, you will hear the announcement that Falcon 9 is in startup, which means that the rocket's own internal computers are now autonomously controlling the launch countdown.
And just to check quick in on weather, we're still green. The range is standing by to support today's mission. As a reminder, if we don't launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time. For those that are just tuning in, on screen is a live view of Falcon 9 uh, at Space Launch Complex 40 off the coast of Florida. We are in the middle of the Transporter 2 mission. This is SpaceX's second dedicated SmallSat rideshare mission. Stage two locks load complete. And there was a call up for second stage locks loading complete. That is the last of propellant load. Falcon 9 is now fully fueled and ready to lift off in about a minute and 40 seconds. This is the eighth time that this booster will be flying today. And a bit later Ground on in the mission, started. we'll also be attempting to recover it for the eighth time back at landing zone one. So you can start to see some white clouds forming around Falcon 9. That is normal and expected at this stage in the countdown. That is cold, dense liquid oxygen meeting the warmer ambient air of Florida and starting to condense and form those white clouds that you see on screen. Flight computers and startup. We have some excitement here in Hawthorne, but uh, Falcon Nine. Continuous account range is no good. We'll hold at 30 seconds of range. Status does not change. Falcon Nine is in startup, and this means that the first and second stages are beginning to pressurize for launch. We're just about 20 seconds away from liftoff. LD, this is RCN. Countdown range is no go. Repeat range is no go. Hold, hold, hold. And we did hear the call to hold. Give us a second. We're going to check in with the teams and see if we can get some more information for you. The countdown hold due to a failed range.
So we did have a hold. It uh, looks like the range was a no-go. There might have been an airplane in the area. We do have a backup opportunity tomorrow, but for today, that's going to do it for us. Uh, hopefully, you'll join us tomorrow for um, uh, the next launch attempt of Transporter 2.